Candelaria here. Welcome to PowerCoin for a new interview. Today I'm here with Michael, can I call you Miles? Just call me Miles. Okay, with Miles Standish. Welcome to PowerCoin. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> we are very happy. Well, as you probably know, Miles is so many things, a coin expert, coin grader, a very knowledgeable person in the numismatics field and we are very honored and happy to have you here Miles so thank you for being um, with us. I'm honored to have traveled and, and to arrive and be here at PowerCoin. Nice. First time in Italy? No, uh, before. But first time at PowerCoin? First time at PowerCoin. So we're just going to talk a little bit about your career, past and future career of course. Sure, I bet sure. new big things are coming. Uh, we're going to talk about coins, about coin collecting, coin grading, so many things. But let's start from the beginning. I heard you got interested in numismatics at a very young age. So how was it? Was it a family hobby or how did it happen? Well, it primarily happened from going through change from banks rolls of coins mm -hmm. and finding coins of value but you know silver coins wheat pennies quarters dimes half dollars in silver uh, was primarily how it got started and because i had, how old were you when you started i was I, I was basically i was nine years old oh so just yeah. a kid okay and and that's how it started because i found out there was value in the silver coins mm -hmm. um, the wheat pennies were worth a little bit more but the real find was finding silver dimes and quarters and half dollars from bank wrap rolls. And my mother would take me to banks and I'd pick them up by several hundred dollars at a time and face value. And then I'd go through them and sort out the coins that were good and then wrap them back up, the rolls, make complete rolls and take them back to the bank and keep doing that from all the banks in the area where I grew up. And that's what started coin collecting. And you basically started grading at nine because that's what you were doing with these coins, right? No, there wasn't, it wasn't necessarily grading the coins. It was really just finding coins of value. It didn't happen till later as a teenager that my grandfather passed away and I got his coin collection. Okay. And then I started looking at the coins closer to determine the condition which would help determine the value. Mm -hmm. And so it, that's when it really started. And then uh, it just kept moving on and snowballing along from there that I would be more and more interested. And I, I just never lost the interest. So you were the first full-time coin grader at NGC, right? No, I was the first time coin grader at PCGS. Oh, first you started with that, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I started at, um, at PCGS in the fall of 1986 and worked there until uh, the fall of 2015 and then I joined NGC. How do you grade a coin? What's the process? Do you have a coin in your hand and then what happens? Well, you, you know, um, you want to properly look at the coin in the right type of lighting, the right conditions. So do you use like special lights or is it natural light? No, there's there's no windows in the grading room. Okay. And there's no fluorescent light. It's only incandescent lighting Okay. is the only thing that typically graders use. Uh -huh. um, a 75 watt light bulb is the maximum that's needed. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not too light. It's not too bright. It's just right. Okay. <laughs> and um, to determine the condition of the coin and the authenticity, because you have to determine that the coin is real before you grade it, right. or it doesn't make sense to grade it. Okay. So you have to, you know, with, with vintage coins primarily, you have to make sure that it is a real coin. So what are your tools? Do you, do you use any tool besides light? You know, um, some things that you want to look at closer, you might use a five power magnification. Mm -hmm. um, really, in, in, in a high degree of many instances, nothing more is needed than maybe a five power magnification. Maybe, it, maybe a little bit higher to look at a mint mark to see if it was added or to check something closer on the details of the coin. But um, five power magnification can, can, you can accomplish a lot of work done of with course. just that. Yeah. There's, there's less magnification involved than people think, mm -hmm. um, with an exception of maybe looking at a, a modern coin, which using a five power magnification, if you can't see anything wrong with it, it's a 70, okay? 70 you know, is the highest grade. Right, right. 70 okay. is, is the perfect grade in either Proof 70 or Mint State MS 70. But the determination of the grade 
um, is from a lot of experience. All coin graders that work at the grading services have a number of years of experience. And um, so that there's a, a standard by the grading service to adhere to, to follow. You know, a grader knows that when he sits in the chair, that it's his job on a daily basis to adhere to the standard of the grading service and grade the coins as humanly possible correct mm -hmm. as they can. You know, you, you know, first off, looking at a coin, you want to determine, you know, if it's uncirculated or not. And if it's uncirculated, you know, it's between 60 and 70 and you got to figure out where it fits the best. How long does it take to grade a coin? You know, it depends on what it is. I've never put a clock to mm -hmm. it. You know, modern coins, modern coins don't take a lot of time mm -hmm. because of the narrowness of choices right. of the grades. You've only got a couple of grades. You know, typically if you're working with a very good mint, uh, the quality of the coins that are exceptional, you know, make the coins really nice, make the job easier for the coin grader. Because he, he only has a couple of choices. Where if you take an older coin, uh -huh. you might have, you know, circulated or uncirculated, where it may have had some contact marks or abrasions. So you have 60 to 70 with those coins. But with a lot of modern coins, you typically only have you know, 68, 69, and 70, and that's about it. What do you prefer doing, old coins or new coins, modern coins? Well, I, you know, I've spent a lifetime of looking at coins, um, and I've graded all the world's great rarities, all the, the half million dollar, the million dollar, the multi-million dollar coins. I've done that. The reason that I've always liked the modern coins is I believe that it increased the amount of collectors in the world today. And that's why I was so far, far, I was lucky I was ahead of myself because nobody really thought like I thought about modern coins, that it would grow the interest of the world to collect more coins, not just modern coins, but some collectors get interested in the vintage US and world coins. Mm -hmm. So I felt like my efforts expanded the marketplace. How many coins do you think you've graded in your career? Over 10 million. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Okay. Well, you've been in the industry for a very long time. What do you think is the biggest change that has happened in, numi in modern numismatics? And where do you think this industry is headed? Also considering the new technologies, but also the new way of selling coins. Like we have e-commerce, like PowerCoin or selling on social media. So what do you think is, is happening? Well, one of the reasons that I created the modern coin market is I believed in roughly, let's go back to about 1995 to 98. Okay. During that period of time, I said more coins in the future will be sold at the time, I said the internet. But what I was saying was really that means the internet, social media, yeah. all, types, all types of visual aids yes. and television, and that is what people would be buying is what they see well and what looks great. And that's why at the grading services, the label at the top, oh, before they were very bland. They were very just, you know, they were white and they were blue. But I created all the graphics that started happening that you see today. Mm -hmm. that's, from, that's from basically 1998. And if I'm not mistaken, you also introduced the autographs. On yes, the exactly. Yeah, most people didn't understand what I was trying to do, but I was trying to I was trying to make two collectibles, an authentic autograph of a significant person that may relate to this coin, and it would attract not just coin collectors, but autograph collectors. So I figured, again, I was trying to grow the marketplace. Yeah. I always called that the double play of collectibles, and that is you can bring autograph collectors into the coin market, and vice versa. Uh, nobody knew that's what I was thinking, but that's really what I saw. Now it's, I've always said great ideas morph into better ideas. And then I started hiring former mint directors of, mm -hmm. of US and world mints, Australia, Africa, United States, former mint directors, because those mint directors were important when coins were made at their mints. In the United States, many times a coin is issued from the US mint with a facsimile autograph of that mint director. And I thought it would be great to have an authentic hand signed autograph by that mint director. So when they retire and leave the mint, I was able to hire them to sign for autographs. I think it's seven or eight mint directors, confirmed mint directors and non-confirmed mint directors that I've brought into the market to sign autographs. 
they're delighted because they never knew they were going to get to do that. Right. So I've made them very successful by doing that and brought them into a marketplace that they didn't know they would do after they left the Mint. That's very interesting. What would you say to a person who is new to this world and just wants to start a collection? I always suggest buy what you like. Mm -hmm. don't, you don't need to buy what people tell you to buy. You know, if you look at a nice modern coin that you like, or a vintage coin, buy what you like. But before you do that, you know, you want to work with a dealer that is a trusted dealer, that um, he, he's very active in the business. Um, he's very pronounced as far as people know who they are. Mm -hmm. don't, deal with, don't deal with somebody that nobody knows them, um, right. but deal with somebody that somebody actually knows um, that has credibility that you can work with to build your collection and continually build your collection, that they plan on staying in the business, creating more coins and buying and selling more coins that you potentially will like. Mm -hmm. um, and find out the value of coins too. And, um, but primarily buy what you like is important. I have a question about PGCS and NGC. I know, so is there a difference in grading the coins between these two companies? Like I know they use a slightly different vocabulary, terminology, but is, is the process the same? The process, process is really the same. Mm -hmm. um, I think on, uh, when you say the, the vocabulary, or the different terminology, It's just slightly different, and if you like, say, um, uh, I think NGC on a, on, a, on, a, on a proof coin that's Cameo, they use Ultra Cameo, where PCGS uses Deep Cameo, mm -hmm. um, but the, 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 the verbiage is just about the same. It's the same. So you recently launched a collection of coins. They're designed by you, right? Yes. They're uh, all dedicated to your country, to the United States. We have George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, the USS mm -hmm. Arizona. Are you planning on designing more coins? Yeah, I've, uh, I've designed now over 50 coins. And um, I'm grateful for the opportunity to design coins that people are loving, that mm -hmm. they like. Yes. And I'm very pleased with that. So that makes me very excited to keep going. Okay. Um, it won't just stop with the United States coins. It will be world coins and it'll tell the story of the world. Anything that I've ever designed will tell the story or have a connection to the rest of the world. So even though I've started with US coins, um, I'm working on projects in the future that'll go outside of the United States. Okay. Okay, because I, wait to see them. <laughs> because like I said, I like bringing more and more people to the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So I hope that there's Italians because I've designed things that relate to Italians, coinage, right. or Asian coins that relate to the whole world market of Asia or the Middle East or South America. I want to draw everybody into coin collecting like I always have. And I've been very consistent that way since, you know, since so, time began, I've been trying to draw people into collecting coins from all over the world. So that's what you're still up to. That's, that's, that's what you want to do now. That, that is one of my projects. Um, you know, I've written two best-selling books. I know. And are you writing a new book? Um, I am. Okay. I, I am. I am. And that, um, I'm very excited about that because it really is a book that nobody's ever done before, okay. which even though I've had two other books, the first book that I did was on American Silver Eagles, uh -huh. which is a best-selling book. Uh, was a runaway bestseller and it's in its fifth or heading towards its fifth edition. Um, uh, nobody had ever written that book before and nobody thought anybody would want it. Well, uh, I don't know of another book that has sold as many copies on an individual coin series. Nice. Um, but the next book um, is uh, a book that nobody's ever written before. So I'm hoping okay. that... When, when should, we, should we expect that book? Um, I, I'm hoping in 2023. Okay, so next year. Yeah. Okay, yeah. nice. What is numismatics for you? Do you see it more like an investment or like a hobby and a passion or both of the things? Well, I think you have to have passion for anything that you collect. I think any time that you buy gold and silver, it is an investment. It, depending on what degree. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody might buy one coin because they like it and that's all they wanted. And that's it, yeah. But some people buy lots of coins. I think that uh, each individual person is different. Personally, for myself, I buy what I like 
but the other part of it is preservation of my wealth, in that it's maintained in numismatic gold and silver coins or platinum, um, those three metals primarily for me. But that's the next part, which is extremely important to me. But I'm different. Mm -hmm. Everybody else could have a different opinion of what they look at. It oh, as. yeah, of course. How did you get to know PowerCoin? A mutual friend introduced us, and uh, I got to know Antonello in, uh, in Chicago at, th at the American Numismatic Money Show. This was 20, 2019. I got to meet uh, Antonello at the show, and uh, we've been building a relationship through through the last three plus years so nice and now you're here <laughs> and i said and i and i said if i get to europe that i would come to italy and i would visit powercoin so here i am you did it yep. nice now do you want to play a game okay <laughs> okay i have some coins here and i'll just show them to you and you can just tell us what is your first impression okay <laughs> so let's start with this one Oh my goodness. This is our baby cyborg. It's baby cyborg project. Yes. That has to be one of the most unusual colored coins I've ever seen. I have never seen a coin with this color. It's the first time I've seen it because she would, you wouldn't show me the coins before we started taping. <laughs> no, no, no. Absolutely. But no, this is um, obviously it's a very beautiful coin with the child and, and that means a lot to me. Well, this is part of a series that it's called Cyborg Revolution. This is the second release. And the, the series tells a story about this alien cyborg coming to the world. They contaminate the water with like nanorobots. I mean, it's a story made up by us. So. It's a science fiction story. Yes. And they want to transform all human people into cyborgs. And the transformation is complete when the first baby cyborg is created. So this is the number two coin. We have three more coins coming in the next three years. So this so. is a series on science fiction. Yes. And what that reminds me of is that you have a numismatic coin, which attracts coin collectors. And you have a science fiction coin that attracts science fiction fans. So it's a lot like what I've done in the past That's with true. autographs, where I brought autograph collectors and coin collectors together. Mm -hmm. You're doing the same thing at PowerCoin with a series like this. It's very lovely, very interesting story. Thank but you. I think the science fiction background of it, I think there's, there might be more science fiction fans in the world mm -hmm than there are even autograph collectors. The end of this story, but I'll tell you later because I can't tell to everybody okay. the end of this story, but it's incredible. So I can't wait for 2025 for the story to end so everybody will know how this ends. Very interesting. Thank you. I have another one. So this is the new coin, zebra. Oh boy. That's incredible. Now, that is the zebra going through the field or the water? So that's up to you. For the coin designer, it was water. But for me, I see this zebra walking like in a golden field. Yeah, golden field of wheat even, right? even though so we don't know if that is. It depends, but that's nice because you can see whatever you want on this coin. That's incredible. I like it. It's a great visual coin. You can look at it straight on, but it's good to look at it straight down. And it's fun phenomenal looking design you know what it is right away i think collectors are really going to enjoy this this is a new series we just launched it on friday and we're already working on the next coins and i can imagine <laughs> i can imagine all if it's going to be animals i can imagine yeah. the phenomenal animals that'll yeah. be there and wait let's oh, okay this is another animal on a different oh. perspective boy i'll tell you what Kids are gonna love this. Yes. Kids are gonna absolutely love this. But it's it's wow. like a it's like a, a coin and a toy at the same yes. time. Beloved building blocks. That's the name of this series. Well, this is an exciting coin. Kids are gonna love this. But and also, I mean, actually, I adults too. Yeah, I feel for I want what, what other series? If this is a series, I want them all. Yeah, we I don't have want more one. We'll is this later. is this five ounce silver? This is a five ounce. Yes. Yeah. It's it's incredible. Another one. Okay. Ooh, what is the name of this? This is Dark Checkmate. The, the design wants to take you into a chess game with the Green Reaper. Um, so it's like you are sitting in front of the Green Reaper and you're playing. There is an inscription saying, you can't cheat death. I, didn't see, I can't see it. Yeah, it's, it's on the, with the capsule, it's hard to see. We're not it's getting out of this alive. Very interesting. 
This is quite a lot of an imagination. Again, we are working on the second coin of this one. It's so excited, but I can't say things, unfortunately. <laughs> and we have the last one, Moses. Ah. This is well, part of the Eternal Sculpture series, but we ended the first Eternal Sculptures. This is the first one of the second Eternal Sculptures. Do they all have this format? A different diameter, a different weight, and also the, there is a different finish on the design, on the statue. Uh, the previous one had like a white finish, it really looked like marble, but we wanted to do something different for this one, so we used this silver finish. It's gorgeous. This, this, this to me is old art that's fabulous. Thank you. Is this a two ounce or a three ounce? This is a three ounce. Uh -huh. Yeah, the previous one was two and for the new one we decided to change the weight. Okay, so thank you for playing this game. So I have one more question for you. What do you see in the future of numismatics? Well, I think that um, right now is the biggest it's ever been as far as collectors. And I think there is a continued thirst from collectors to add more coins to their collection, but also the expansion. The expansion because social media, um, because of the internet, the expansion of the marketplace has grown so much and it, I feel like it's going to continue to do so. And the number, you know, not just the fact that people get involved because they like coins, but People in general like to treasure hunt. Coin collecting is kind of like treasure hunting. And everybody loves the story of, you know, finding a sunken treasure. And I've certified sunken treasures. <laughs> I mean, I've been involved in the grading of coins that have come out of treasure ships. So, but I think that, I think coin collecting is like treasure hunting. And I think it is in a lot of people's DNA to find something they want and mm -hmm. desire that has exclusivity, rarity, right. you know, availability is difficult. Uh, the hunt is always on to find the next best one or the one, but I only see the market growing. And, and you know, a lot of it is because it's gold and silver mm -hmm. and people are attracted. I mean, gold and silver is God's money. It's been around for thousands <laughs> of years. Yes. And I don't think that's gonna change at all because it's in our DNA. But you think this is the best moment so far? for Well, it's Mike? the biggest, you know, the marketplace has only grown. I mean, there's more collectors in the marketplace today than there was in 2000 mm -hmm. or 1990 or 1980. This is 2022 and there's more collectors now than there's ever been. Do you think young people are attracted to numismatics, to that's, collecting? That's the biggest change. Mm -hmm. And it's because social media, it's yeah. introducing people to nine-year-olds, 12-year-olds, 15-year-olds, 18-year-olds, that 25 years ago, they weren't, you know, that age group was not interested. 20-year-olds 20, 20 or 15-year-olds weren't all that interested in coin collecting. Maybe because of the state quarter program in the United States that started out in 1999, brought some of those people in. But social media has been the number one factor of bringing more and more people in to buy gold and silver coins and get interested in numismatic coins. Absolutely, I agree. Okay, Miles, thank you for your time. Pleasure. It was really my pleasure. Well, I'm so delighted that I could keep my word and come to PowerCoin when I got to Italy and I'm having, I'm having a great time. Well, thank you for watching this interview. Don't forget, collect, invest, enjoy. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs>